What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 244. We start today's episode off with Sterling coming to us and requesting that he plays in this game because he's been in good form. And so I said, alright, fair enough. And that's funny because I don't usually do that. As you guys can probably see, every time a player comes to me and says, oh, please, please let me play in the next game, I'm always like, nah, just, just, just nah, just get out of my office. But for Sterling, I don't mind because he's actually had a really decent start to his Millwall career. Of course, only played a few games so far, but I, I've really been impressed. And yes, 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 yes. I'm a bit of a pace of user and that's totally fine but um, yeah I've been really impressed with Sterling it's, it's not just about his pace as well his dribbling is fantastic he seems like one of those players who like for example McCola in my team is just pace and nothing else but with Sterling he's got that kind of dribbling that sort of close ball control which is really nice and really handy to have as well but uh, anyway we take on Sunderland here for the first game of today's episode and the first chance fell there but Farinetti made a really good save from the corner Shadley crosses the ball in we don't really deal with the ball when it comes to Josh McKechnie he strikes it, good block by Polo, and then Cabral's strike is well blocked and saved by a combination of Luke Shaw and Farinetti. So, a couple of good saves by my new Italian goalkeeper, and it is still 0 0. But I wasn't really surprised to see Sunderland uh, have a bright start because obviously they've been taken over on the game and therefore should be looking to build some decent sides. But uh, Kelvin had a strike there in the 26th minute, but unfortunately it was turned behind by the goalkeeper Pickford. So, alright, fair enough, they made some good signings. They've still got some academy players playing that, as far as I'm aware, don't get to very high overalls in this game. But anyway, uh, Guterres made it 1-0 in the 27th minute through that corner. Nice cross and a good header by our captain to give us the lead just before the half an hour mark. And that was how the first half would finish and in the second half it started very, very, very poorly because unfortunately for us, Suzo went in for a 50-50 challenge there and ended up getting an injury and uh, suddenly got on the break. We managed to get the ball back to our goalkeeper, Ferranetti, but yes, yeah, Suzo gets an injury. That's a real shame. He was able to run it off and continue in the game, but it was one of those where you know he will still get an injury for a couple of weeks. He was just okay to finish this game, but still, as uh, you see Carrasco turn on his blinkers down the right-hand side there, he picks out Oscar Polo and that is a very Brilliant header from Oscar Polo, he beats two players in the air to head it in there, that was brilliant from our Colombian striker, so even though Suzo did hit the deck and we were temporarily down to 10 men, we were still able to get a goal there as Carrasco used his pace down the right hand side, that's what I love about playing Carrasco at right back, yeah sure, he may not get as many goals anymore, but he's just so good at just running down that wing and crossing the ball, and he's so quick, even at 31, and that was a great cross, and also Oscar Polo, the leap, look at that, that's some air time on that, Darren Maddox style, that's brilliant, he out jumps two Sunderland defenders and puts it past the goalkeeper Pickford to make it 2-0 to Millwall so yeah I was you know kind of kind of disappointed by Sunderland I guess if I can use that uh, word disappointed to some of the fact my opponents weren't playing very well not many people would say that but yeah I was disappointed because I was expecting this to be a really really tough game and yes Ferranetti had to make a couple of really decent saves he was another one here to deny a good header and then the follow-up shot was offside but other than that the game was quite routine you know we had more chances and we were passing the ball around quite nicely and you know it, it's a surprise as uh, Carrasco goes for a halfway line goal here and uh, puts it just off target. It's a surprise because, as I said, Sunderland have clearly been taken over. You know, no club just somehow spontaneously has 69 million in their bank to buy one of my centre backs last year. Sunderland have been clearly taken over, just like they were in my FIFA 13 career mode. Yet. For some reason, you know, they haven't clearly bought too many amazing players and it's just odd because I thought they'd have more chances than that. And that was their last chance there with uh, Carral running forward, but another good save by Farinetti. But yeah, it was, it was odd. It really was odd. I, I expected them to, to make this game, I, you know, basically I expected to draw this game. I thought going into this game, it will probably be the first time this year where I failed to get the three points. Instead, I got two goals. I didn't concede. Farinetti made a couple of good saves, yes, but other than that, I felt like I was in control and it was quite surprise what can I say but still he did win 2-0 also, uh, you know, really pleased to see Ferranetti get a clean sheet as well, because obviously I do find clean sheets hard to come by. And um, yeah, I was, I was very, very uh, glad that we managed to get the win there and continued our 100% record this season so far. We haven't lost a single game yet so far, and um, we haven't drawn a game so far in the league or the Champions League. The only time we technically had a draw was in the Super Cup, when Napoli took us into extra time and then penalties. Yeah, of course, we still won the game, but of course, it 
would still count as a draw officially, but um, yeah, it's it's been a really, really good start. No losses so far. Things looking very, very good in all competitions. As I did say at the start of the season, I am desperate to get a treble this year. The FA Cup, the Champions League and the Premier League have not done that so far, so I would love to do that. And I guess we just have to wait and see. But uh, anyway, we took on Galatasaray here in the Champions League for the second and final game of today's episode. First chance fell there, but Ezekiel's shot was well saved. And in the 11th minute, Glenn Robinson finds Ezekiel, he finds brilliant Makola, he plays it back in towards Ezekiel and this finish was just brilliant, that is our wanted circle in the perfect way, in the most perfect way possible there, I stopped the ball and I thought, do you know what, I'm just going to take one quick touch and then try and dispatch it into the top corner and that's exactly what happened and as I said before, Ezekiel is just fantastic on this game, whether it's through smashing shots, chip shots, finesse shots, rounding the goalkeeper, Ezekiel is most likely going to put the ball in the back of the net if you're, you know, decent enough at finishing the ball, which I may not be amazing, but I'm decent enough at scoring some goals, so that was a lovely goal by Ezekiel and he makes it 1-0 and in the 17th minute Glenn Robinson finds McCola quick little back heel to Triggs who strikes it with that 5 star weak foot but it goes just over the bar and out for a goal kick so still 1-0 but in the first half all the chances fall into half but this one didn't Galatasaray came forward here and we had to be bailed out with a fantastic save by uh, Jack Butland actually not starting uh, sorry starting not Ferranetti really good save by Butland and we managed to get the ball away so very good save there by our goalkeeper and still 1-0 and from that we broke and as Triggs collects the ball here he ran Rounds his man, slides it through to Oxlade Chamberlain who finds Ezekiel. He plays that wide towards brilliant McCola down the left hand side, takes on his man, beats him for pace, gets inside, offloads to Triggs. Triggs strikes it, the first shot's blocked, comes back to him, fake shots around the man, puts it on the floor, shoots, but he hits the post and it goes straight to the goalkeeper's glove. So Triggs hitting the post there with uh, the last shot of the first half and it was held up the first half to finish. So 1 0 so far here in Turkey and things looking very bright as things stood. And 10 minutes after the restart, you see Galatasaray get on the ball here, trying to hit back and find that equalising goal. They get down the right-hand side with this guy whose name I'll never be able to pronounce. He crosses the ball in towards Bruma, and the star of the World Cup, for me, with Portugal almost made it one apiece. And I have to say... He should have done, because Butland it got caught in no man's land, he got nowhere near the ball. Bruma had essentially a free header, yet he hit, uh, headed the ball wide the post and out for a goal kick. So what a chance that was for Bruma, but he ended up missing it, and it is still 1-0. And in the 64th minute, it's another great chance for Bruma, who goes through 1-1. One -one. This time the chance a little bit harder than the first one, as he's being closed down. But this time Butland redeems himself with a really good save, and keeps the score at 1-0 to Millwall. So we're still in front of this game, but you know Galatasaray did have a few chances, but easy Gino Milani get on the ball and strike it, but it's a good save by the goalkeeper, and we can't turn it in at the far post either, so good stop there, and from the corner, it's crossed in by brilliant Makoda, I went for the edge of the area, picked out Gino Milani, who takes it to a couple of touches and shoots, but the goalkeeper tips it onto the post, and then the follow-up shot by Ricky Tilson, I have no idea how I missed the target, and didn't make it 2-0, but it wouldn't matter, because the game did finish 1-0, and yeah, the winning streak survives, we continue, we're having an absolutely fantastic start to the season so far both in the league and in the Champions League and of course we've already wrapped up two trophies in the Community Shield and the Super Cup things are just off to the most perfect start and you know if this is to be our last season in career mode I don't know for sure it might well be if it is you know, well, what a fantastic last season we're going to have because everything's going brilliantly right now and I'm just really, really enjoying this season with Millwall so far. And, uh, yeah, you know, I have been reading comments and I do try and read as many comments as possible. So thank you for the comments and people saying, you know, can you leave Millwall when you're going to go somewhere else? Which I just, I find it really surprising how, I'm not going to use the word impatient, but I find it surprising how it seems like after just one or sometimes just two years, people already want me to leave a club. I don't really know why that is. For Millwall, it's a little bit different, yes, because we started a career here, but even so, it's crazy. At Napoli and Spurs, within one year, everyone was already telling me to leave, and the same's happening with Millwall. Don't forget, since returning, we've only had two seasons, so it's pretty odd, it really is, but uh, still, I, I don't know. Um, the, the answer to the question is I'm not sure yet if we are to leave sorry if this is to be my last season in career mode I'd rather stay here for the full season because leaving halfway through would be quite pointless in my opinion 
because there isn't really much we could do in half a season at a new club. But if this isn't to be my last season, then yeah, sure, leaving is definitely a possibility. I'm just not sure to what club and uh, to how I could make it interesting. But we'll have to wait and see. Who knows? And there you go. But uh, as we enter a new month, here's a look at the squad report. You just saw a youth squad monthly report there. Here's the squad report. A reminder, squad report is shown at the start of every single calendar month. And also a look at the league table. Uh, so far, six games in, six wins. The perfect start. Things looking absolutely fantastic so far. And also a look at the Champions League. We'll show you that we have also won our opening two games. So things are absolutely perfect right now. And as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the episode, please leave a like because it's much appreciated and it really does help my channel out. Please excuse my voice as well as I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.